maybe maybe back in 2015 unicorns of love it would be a flex pick but yeah, i mean it's just when. yeah still just a pretty strong adc pick overall the valley Varus has been absolutely tearing it up for quite some time now ezreal we talked about before lulu is another flex pick can be support mid or top depending on what flavor you want Rumble is going to be C banning here. It's important to note we are not on 11.13 just yet. Even though the patch notes have been dropped, he does get nerfed next patch, but still definitely a strong pick to consider in this current patch. So we'll see him join the ban table. Of course, is another flex pick, mostly in the jungle though. Gwen yes. being taken off blue side, I think is the most interesting uh, take on this. Looks like they want to go for something a bit different. I mean, it Maybe tells us that... Sin. Yeah, I was going to say, it tells us they're probably looking towards something like a Lee Sin. Uh, first, because that's what we've seen is that if you're banning away Gwen on blue side, it means that you have something else that is more integral to your team composition that you'd rather pick up. So, and there it is, the Lee Sin, as expected. He has been really just incredibly strong because he's in a really solid spot as far as the jungle meta is concerned, and he can tear it up in the mid lane or the top lane when you go that bruisey drain tank, uh, gore drinker, Sterex build. All right now, this is a uh, very interesting uh, Zin Zhao Karma being locked in in response to Lee Sin. Now, Karma is typically being paired with Ezreal with Varus in the current iteration of the meta, can be taken into a solo lane as well, and that kind of makes Karma one of the stronger picks here. And pairing it with a Xin Zhao, a champion that is typically Feast or Famine, does definitely make it a solid duo with jungle mid, I would like to say. Just as a... it doesn't have to be jungle mid, but Karma and Zhao does work together quite well. Volibear and Nautilus being the answer. Nautilus is a very typical answer to these enchanter supports that can be put in the bot lane, it kind of dissuades that Karma from going to the support role and being flexed to a solo lane instead. So very, I really like that uh, touch there to make sure that less variability. Ooh. Jace and being locked Jace. in. Now this Jace is very, very interesting. It's flexible between the top, between top and mid. So I do like that pickup. Uh, he's also, he gives a lot of teams versatility because you can have that poke style and you also do plenty of damage when you dive on in. Now, sort of what we're seeing with the Zinjia and the Karma and this Jace is a lot of run at you. It's sort of get poked down and then you want to zoom on in. Now, one thing that we've been seeing a lot of is stuff like Karma and Jinx, and I'm wondering if we're going to be seeing a hyper carry for Dare because Karma works so well with them. Right, it could definitely be a Kogma. Karma, Kogma doesn't sound too bad, but Sana is still open as well. It is also open. I'm not the biggest fan of Jace. I'm guessing it's supposed to be answering the Lee Sin wherever that goes because Volibear is locked in, and that's usually going to be the jungle. Tristana will be the lock in there, but I'm not the biggest fan of Jace. Simply because he's very technical, and if... Oh, okay. Have oh. A, hello. <laughs> we have a Draven, and he's going to be looking to absolutely tear this one up. Now, I'm going to say Nautilus Draven, that's a bit of a scary lane if it gets rolling, but up against Karma Tristana, there's plenty of flexibility that those champions have, and there's plenty of um, maneuverability that will make it, I think, really tough for this not Draven lane to get ahead as it wants to. Yeah, I'm expecting a Leona here just as a sort of neutral answer to the Nautilus. Make sure that you can kind of deal with the Draven. Make sure he can't get too much value out of taking heal or exhaust. And, and we'll not I see pick think go we'll through. Get, I think we'll get confirmation for that, that it is going to be a Vladimir. Uh, so that's sort of shaking this up. This Karma is going to be in support, and I'm assuming that Jace is going topside. Uh, as this Vladimir might have just been an answer to the TF. Yeah, very likely there. I'm not sure I agree with that angle that you can take. It definitely is something that you that can work because Vladimir just kind of says, okay, yeah, you go roam, I'll scale up, I'll sit here, I'll farm, I'll get 12 CS a minute, and then come 20 minutes, I'll have two items, I'll one-shot your backline, and good luck. But if the TF is used right, if it's maneuvered around the map properly, you can snowball lanes way faster than the Vladimir can farm up, and you can make this Draven absolutely massive. And it could say, okay, cool, you have two items at 20 minutes, I have three. So, good luck, <laughs> you know? That is very true. A Draven is one of those champs just designed to snowball. If he gets ahead, if he gets those adoration stacks rolling, it is so difficult to shut him down. But we can't count Dare out, obviously, because while, yes, uh, C9 Amateur has really good team play, really good macro, uh, there have been some really standout performances. I mean, yesterday, uh, sort of the shining light of Dare was Eric Ziyang on playing really Zin Zhao and just doing so much with this champion and really being part of the reasons why Dare was able to hold on uh, to Zeus, at least in game one, so well. 
and practice also has an intimate understanding of Tristana and all of her matchups. So I'm really saying that if this TF isn't used perfectly and this Draven doesn't get ahead, I really like Dare's composition because of how it scales together really, really well. You've got Karma with Shirelia's as well as uh, her own Mantra-empowered E that can just zoom a Tristana, a Xin Zhao, and a Vladimir straight into your backline, and that's terrifying. Uh, that's absolutely correct. I'm expecting the Xin Zhao to build towards that tanky side and maybe go Divine Sunder into... Probably a Randuin's, I would say, is one of the more ideal options. Maybe he just goes Sterics for the overall tankiness that it provides. But they don't really have the necess a necessarily like, decent front line. It's kind of just Xin Zhao goes in, Vlad goes in, and then Karma buffs them up. But I think the main thing that we have to look at here is the fact that Karma is into a team that doesn't really use Serpent's Fang that well. And that's super important because a lot of Karma's power right now in the meta is their ability to just provide a massive AoE shield onto everyone on the team. And Serpent's Fang is kind of the answer to that, being able to reduce the incoming shields as well as de decrease the amount of shielding that is already on them. There's not really many champions that can use that well here. There's Draven, but that's pretty much all single target. You're not going to hit like a five-man stand aside or a five-man whirling death. It's going to be mainly, okay, yeah, I'm hitting what's in front of me, they die, and then I'm moving back. But if Karma gets to shield the entire team, the single target Serpent's Fang is not going to be as impactful. That is true. It is It is not going to be as impactful. That means that you're going to have a difficult time chunking through some of these players as they get these really, really massive shields. I mean, and I'm also assuming that Magi will probably be going towards uh, maybe a second item, uh, Kempunk Chain, or not Chain Sword, uh, Putrefire, Chemtech Putrefire, uh, in order to really get this... Lee Sin down and to get this Draven shut down as they both really like lifesteal. Yeah, both these, uh, a lot of these champions do love lifesteal here, a lot of healing here. And I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see how this is maneuvered. C9 definitely has a lot of ways to make around, make plays around the map. So it's, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how it is. Of course, Jace, if he's put behind, is notoriously weak. So we'll see how they decide to play around that. And they have a bunch of lanes that they just want to snowball on the side of C9 Amateur. So we'd like to see which angle they go for if they just say, okay, well, I mean, Jace is not that impactful late game anyway. Let's just shut down their late game scaling. Or say, okay, let's just make Jace really useless. Very true, as we are on the rift. Game one between C9 Amateur and Dare White looking to get underway as this is a do or die series for Dare in this risen champions league that of course there will still be one more game they'll play against uh glaive for uh determining third and fourth place in the group but it would count their playoff uh it would get rid of their playoff hopes and they would not be able to move on in this tournament so they really need to pick it up here and i think that putting eric ziang on something comfortable putting practice on comfort and magi on this incredibly strong karma is certainly a way to get that done Absolutely, yes. We're going to see a little bit of a cheese here from C9 Academy. They do have a very strong level 1, a lot of lockdown here. Uh, yeah. so they're just going to go straight for it. I'll let you take over here. They're coming in for the invade. Magi might get hooked up. There's the airborne. There's the root. Flash away. Doesn't get caught by the stun, but now Eric Ziang is hiding in the bush, looking to maybe turn this onto Breezy. I don't know about that one. Eric Ziang having to flash away as well. Ignite comes down, whirling axe as well but not enough to secure a kill. It looks like they'll just take the blue buff instead. But all in all, a really great start by C9 Amateur Squad. Yeah, big greedy from Magic did not just immediately flash the Nautilus hook. And then X Yang just going in for really no reason. There's essentially a four-man in there, and he's going in 1v3 or 1v4. They're, the bot lane clearly wanted to back off, and now he loses his blue buff, and his pathing is pretty much over at this point. He has to try and risk his life to invade the, the enemy top side here to try and get some amount of XP, some amount of gold, but if C9 Amateur can play around that properly and just be able to shut him compl out completely, there's a very good chance that this Xin Zhao only gets one quadrant of the entire jungle. Yeah, and that would be absolutely brutal as we're already seeing XU taking the wolves as well, and it's so brutal to try and invade when you're already knowing you're going to be a level down, you're going to be down XP, you're going to be down priority. I do believe that there are some pings coming out from C9 as well to try and shut down any potential invade, as they probably saw yesterday how uh, in the VODs, Eric Ziang and how impactful he was on the Xin Zhao, so shut him down early and shut down that from happening. And now, no flash on Magi, the hook lands, that looks like a kill in its first blood for the Draven. Not what you want to be seeing. 
uh, like I said before, Nautilus super good pick into the Enchanters. But aside from that first one, I love what I what Iju is doing here. He immediately got all of uh, Eric Jiang's bot side, instantly recalls, and then heads to his top side. It's very, very smart. It basically means that, yeah, the Zinjal's not getting anything. Because now he can just path towards bot lane. He doesn't really have to go towards this top scuttle. He can if he wants, and it looks like he will. But oh, not necessary as here we go. <laughs> Practice having to double sum out. I mean, great timing, but this is just complete, you know, domination of this bot side. It looks like even two plates going down and all the CS getting denied. It's practicing magic. I haven't even hit level two while Wixie is level three. Yeah, this is uh this is a bit excessive here. Just absolutely shutting out the bot lane. Pretty much solo. I mean, the volibear the volibear was on bot side for this entire time. And he didn't really exert any pressure there other than saying, yeah, no, we know you're bot side. That's about it. Like, that's that's all the Volibear did. This is practically solo. And there is some amount of pressure involved in... Actually, I'm going to shut up a little bit yeah. here just in case. Okay, no, 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 you're <laughs> good. I actually didn't wind up stopping that back. Maybe he was on cooldown or just didn't quite get vision of the Zin. But regardless, this is still a really good position. Is now Axu might be looking to try and dive here as still this bot lane for Dare is only level 2. Yeah, this is less of a dive and more of a, you're not getting this, looks like two, no, only one wave stacked up. Yeah, they're they're getting completely zoned here. Wixie is level four <laughs> compared to level two of the bot lane. This is an absolute tragedy for the bot lane. I would hate to be playing in this lane right now if I was practice. It is. And it looks like it's getting a little bit worse. The hook does land those that Aftershock stats, actually probably keeping Breezy alive as he did take a couple tower shots. But again, this is just so much pressure being exerted as Magi and Practice wanting to use these aggressive picks are really struggling as they got faced with even more aggressive picks. Yeah, definitely one of the uh, one of the weaknesses of trying to play with these enchanters here, especially if you are as proficient as Breezy is on these types of engaged sports like Nautilus that can kind of shut them out completely. Wixie will literally just reset here. Looks like he will be building towards an essence reverse, so We'll have a very strong, very early one item power spike. Will not be as strong as a mythic, but Draven definitely uses the Essence Reaver proc very well. Sheen off of the Spinning Axe definitely does deal quite a bit of damage here. And compared to the fact that he got a kill, some tower plates, I believe two based on the minimap. And yeah, Breezy now gets to walk up and do this. And they just can go for every single one of these hooks. Exu oh, is no. in the river, and they don't realize this. I, this could be death for Magi in practice. They don't realize war. There's action all over the map. His top side's in a bit of a scuffle. Force flash out of Magi right as it came back up. And this is just permanent pressure in this bot side as C9 are trying to shut them down. Yeah, this is, uh, this is page one if you open up the textbook of how to play Draven lanes. <laughs> uh, this is... This is exactly what you want to see your Draven doing early. Just yeah, completely as... zoning out the enemy ADC. As we see a little trade here, nothing too much. Now, Jace is typically used as a counter to Lee Sin. I believe I mentioned that beforehand, but I've, I've never been the biggest fan of it just because he falls off even harder than Lee Sin. So doesn't get super ahead, then it's kind of a weird pick here. And it looks like he's just going to be staying neutral, even in CS. And compared to what's happening on the bot side, it's not really enough. Yes, you definitely need to have another winning lane to make this work. And now it looks like they're trying to shut it down even harder. Modified getting ganked by the Destiny as the Dragon Kick comes down. Actually, might have been enough to ferry him safety, but no. The vision given by the Ignite and the burn coming down means Captain Shrimps can pick up his first kill of the game. Yeah, very solid roam from Captain Shrimps there. Pushed in mid completely. Vladimir cannot clear it as fast as, as, fast as he needs to. And he just gets to teleport up top lane, collect a free kill back, and then teleport into mid lane, I would argue that he doesn't even need to teleport in here, but my guess is that he would like to get mid pro as early as possible so that he can try to look to repeat gank this top side that now is not flashless, but has no TP as this Rift Herald will be spawning in 35 seconds. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, the power of sometimes bringing up these roaming supports off of an ADC who's already doing pretty well as we're seeing a Breezy roam up with Xy to try and steal away this red buff as they really don't want to let Eric Yang get any farm. 
No, and this is most certainly going to be converting into a dive. Look at this wave crashing right here. They're taking the blast cone over. It's just going to be an absolute massacre up the top side. 100%. Here comes the dive attempt. They haven't aggroed quite yet, and they are lining up their CC perfectly as Breezy taking a couple tower shots, and that's going to be it. As really, all across the map, it feels like C9 is just one step ahead as they're attempting a dive down bot side. Practice and Magi not able to do enough. Magi tanking too many tower shots. Wixie getting one. Wixie potentially getting two. This is disaster for the bot lane of Dare. Absolute horror. Magi took one too many tower shots there. Breezy will have to flash out as he got hit by the wind becomes lightning from the Xin Zhao. Increases the dash range on, I believe, the audacious charge is that ability's name to about a thousand so definitely need to respect that a little bit but magi took one tower shot a bit too much and it's honestly a big question of could you did you even have the damage to do it you had the exhaust on the draven but tristana only had i believe a pickaxe by the time that she was fighting him and that's not nearly enough to contest with the sheen and i believe at the time only double long swords draven that was populating this bot lane so really well played from c9 amateur being able to recognize that uh, Wixie on this Draven can quite literally just 2v1 them if he's so desired. And that's exactly what happened. They used that pressure, that ability, that self-sustainability, excuse me, of the Draven to just move top, four-man dive top, grab the red buff, grab Rift Herald, rotate down to mid to push that out, and then reset. Yeah, and it's working perfectly as Essence Reaver picked up sub 10 minutes, 9.25 on the clock as... This Draven is a monster. Indeed, 3 and 0, oh, first item in hand. Absolutely. We're seeing the Volibear taking a bit of an aggressive route here as Captain Shrimps needs to be a little bit careful here. Never mind, Speedo. Maybe Speedo needs to be careful as Eric Yang's trying to make this happen. Destiny gets popped. Gold card comes in. This isn't looking good for Dares. Now it's 2v3, but Speedo's still very, very low. The Bear's hopping on in, trying to make this happen, and the gang gets turned around, and Speedo picks up a kill and a modified, and Eric Yang might be next on the chopping block if they choose to go for the dive. Yeah, very good response from C9 Amateur to try and recognize that Iju is already on the top side of the map trying to look for something, maybe a potential dive into the into the mid lane, maybe a potential dive top lane, or just simply looking to counter jungle. Either way, he was able to read the movements correctly of Eric Xiang. He's like, there's only really one way, he, one place he could be, and that's in his top jungle. So he has to make a play top side somewhere. He read that perfectly and was able to respond. Of course, the Destiny Gate did come out from Captain Shrimp, did burn that rather long cooldown. It's only about two minutes early, if I remember correctly. So it's looking pretty disastrous for Dare. C9 Amateur is playing this early game out super well. Yeah, they're playing it so well. They're really optimizing every single point in the game where they know that they're stronger and then just snowballing it. I mean... When you're going from the first blood in the jungle and denying as much farm as possible, I've really just been making sure that they're always uh, one step ahead. And this feels really tough to play out when you're already 5k gold down at only 10 minutes. Yeah, it definitely is not one of the situations that you would like to be in when you're a team here. And now they just get to pressure this Vladimir in the mid lane. And it's just what I said, the Vladimir can just sit here and farm forever. But if TF roams, if TF is able to snowball his side lanes, then the Vladimir pick is kind of irrelevant because the rest of his team is going to be at the same power spike as the Vladimir. Yeah, that's very, very true. It means that no one's going to be really, at any point, as strong as any single member of C9. As right there, ultimate gets used by the Nautilus just to zone away Dare's bot side so they can clean up, I believe, this first tower and try and get as much gold onto that Draven as possible. Oh, good sonic wave there. We will yeah. chuck out quite a bit. But, I mean, look at the item differential on the top side now. We thought that that was the one, like, safe haven for Dare. But now, all of a sudden, it's a Gore Drinker Lee Sin versus Serrated Dirk and Tear on this Jace. That is quite a big difference as this first tower is going to be going down all five plates into this Draven's pocket. That is just so much gold and it's going to convert into so much damage as, again, C9 just understood exactly where they were weak, where they were strong and how to optimize it. You know, this Lee Sin was getting chunked out early. Level 6 hits. Destiny comes on up. And now the Lee Sin is a level up. Yeah, keep in mind, that was all without dropping the Rift Herald. It's now going to get dropped mid to get another tower down. That should be enough damage, unless I'm miscalculating. Just a little bit off. Should be able to clean that up a little bit. Actually, no, they won't be able to. That's a bit of my miscalculation there, but... It's still they... at, like, 
one or two autos. It's going to be going down soon as now XUC's practice in the jungle doesn't actually jump on him as the rest of Dare's coming up and the call to reset has come through for C9. Because I'm expecting some pretty big item pickups across the board. Absolutely. I'm looking at this Draven buyer right here. We'll just go and pick up the Berserker's Greaves. Nothing, nothing too crazy. But that being said, the rest of his build is looking, uh, <laughs> looking pretty stacked here. Yes. Now, Twisted Fate will end up picking up the Everfrost here. Again, Mage items did get buffed in 11.13. We're not on that patch yet. Just a slight gold uh, decrease on their overall price. Still, same stats, same everything. So, will still be a very valuable item for Twisted Fate, being able to lock down champions for even longer than Twisted Fate can normally do so. And Breezy is just exerting so much map pressure here as he is just able to walk in here, secure the Scuttle Crab for his jungler despite the fact that this jungler has completely reset. And now they're going to give more gold to this Draven as he's most certainly going to be able to knock this mid lane tower down. 100%. That's going to be all 15 plates dropped in favor of C9 as the last tier 1 tower falls at just 1340. And... This is really looking so difficult because it's not like there have been a bunch of explosive team fights or things going back and forth. It's just cool, collected, calculated aggression as now here comes the dive and that's going to be it for modified. Yeah, three ulti is going down for that. I would argue that that's a bit excessive, but at the same time, they do get to pressure this top tower down. Maybe be able to take it with the next wave coming in. Draven does take it towers quite fast with the Essence Reaver proc being able to fire up his auto attacks every so often. And if they can give even more gold to this Draven, then it's going to be a question of how do you deal with it? And that tower will go down, by the way. That is now four towers before 15 minutes going to the side of C9 Amateur. That is absurd, to say yeah. the least. I mean, it certainly is. I mean, 10k gold. That's all there is to say. A 10k gold lead this early feels pretty insurmountable, and it, it very well may be, but there's still tools in Dare's pocket to try and come back, but it really just feels like C9 is going to just play this out as perfectly as they can and use this Herald, use their advantages to just push out as quickly as possible. Absolutely, it looks like they'll just take up the second Rift Herald spawning just before 15 minutes. They've pretty much done the Rift Heralds on spawn, which is quite impressive to be able to get your macro timings on such a high synchronization like that. And now they get to places wherever they want to break open a, a tier 2 tower. Most likely it'll be mid lane. That's often the more uh, important towers to take down. They allow for a lot more map movements than, say, a side lane tower. And, I mean, the only other option is the bot tier 2, so I'm guessing they want to try and force down this mid tier 2. I don't know if Dare can even put up a resistance to it. I'm trying to think of a way, but it's looking incre increasingly more difficult as time goes on. I mean, C9 would have to make a pretty big mistake, but right now they're just playing so well together. Flashes Flash forward from uh captain shrimps and magi is just dead i couldn't even finish the statement as it was just done so quickly now they might be able to pick up one kill on x who looks like they're calling for the fight actually team up gets dropped there's a lot of damage going down onto the back line but there's just not quite enough crack's trying to make something happen but now here comes speedo with the teleport and that's gonna help clean things up for c9 as it started to turn that fight but just not enough damage across dare yeah they will end up dropping their perfect game gave over two kills there and one of them went to the Jace, so definitely get some gold back there as Eric Zang's going back in. He jumps back in. Everfrost gets dropped again. Modified, taking a little bit of a root there. But again, nothing too crazy, nothing insane. As it does slow the game down by a bit, but when you're still, you know, 11.5k gold up, you can take a couple minutes and reset. Absolutely. In fact, I would strongly recommend just taking a taking the time to reset because oftentimes resetting gives you a lot of tempo being able to spend gold being able to put that uh, money that you have accrued into actual physical stats that you can use because gold on itself you can't do anything with i mean if it's sitting in your inventory you you might as well not have it you have to spend it in order for it to be actually usable so oh yeah 100%. resetting is oftentimes really good tempo wise because not only that it allows you to reposition the entire team if you synchronize it well enough and move it to a different point in the map without having to do some weird sort of Jenga and Tetris to try and figure out how to get these pieces to where I want them. No, yeah, absolutely. Resetting as a team means that you can just take a second, look at the map, and just say, hey, where can we exert the most pressures now? It might be mid lane once again. 
That was a disjointed hitbox if I've ever seen on a Magi, but now Eric Yang trying to come back in. This is a 3v4, but Destiny gets popped, meaning this should be a 4v4 any second. But honestly, I don't think you need extra members when you've got such strong members like Wixie and the rest of the team coming down. As here come the kills going everywhere. Speedo on a killing spree and the Gale Force used to clean up onto practice as every single fight is going C9's way. They're looking to knock down more towers. Absolutely. That was... That started off... Looking kind of okay for Dare. Again, even though it was 3v4, they really weren't winning that. Draven was able to chunk them out so hard. Look at the damage from these auto attacks here. Absolutely massive destroying this Vladimir. So you can imagine what it would do to a champion that doesn't have as much health bar, like the Tristana, like the Karma. It would absolutely eviscerate them. So this, this is looking very, very dominating so far. I don't see how they throw this. They're one dragon off of the Ocean Soul spawning in 345. Baron is, hasn't even spawned yet. It's spawning in a minute 30 for the first time in this game. So this is this is quite an impressive display here from C9 Amateur. It certainly is. People were definitely favoring C9 going into this game, but I don't think that they were expecting this much of a stomp, especially after how solid of a performance that this squad put up against Zeus in game one yesterday. I mean, taking them to, I believe, a 35, uh, a 30 minute game is not easy to do against a team as good as Zeus. And now we're expecting uh, good things against C9, but maybe they just weren't ready for the all out aggression that came forward. Absolutely. It's something that you kind of, you kind of think of when you go into this game, like, oh yeah, they have Draven, they have Volibear, they have Lee Sin. They want, they want an early game, but you don't mentally prepare yourselves well enough for how much they're willing to go as we're going to see a little bit of a skirmish here. Yeah, as it looks like Modified is going to get it ran down by Speedo Eggs Yang in the backside, but just the one shot coming down off that Dragon Kick. Now the flash away to mitigate the damage, but the CC still comes down. And while you might be able to not take damage, you can't deny that Nautilus hook as the stuns came down and now C9 is moving towards the mid lane. They will look to, t to knock down this mid inhibitor tower here. I don't think there will be any contest from it. Vladpool already burned. It was just a tiny gold card, but honestly, that might be enough, even though you're right behind your inhibitor there. So have to pay the utmost respect here. We'll end up getting this bot inhibitor as well. And this opens up for such a beautiful macro play where they can now just rotate to Baron. And Darren on. can't really respond, respond to it. They now have super minions that are going to be pushing in the bot lane, in the mid lane, they have complete pressure on them, on the bot side of the map, and now you just exert that pressure onto the top side. And it's just a perfect macro play to try and do that type of thing. When Dragon, when Baron is literally on spawn here. <laughs> yeah, as, I mean, this C9 squad has been together since Spring Proving Grounds, and they are showing it. They're working together incredibly well, as now Practice looks to be the next one to go down. The bear hops in, and XU is slain, Praxis teleport's coming down, but it's too little too late. Burn Red Dread will probably just be going down in a couple seconds as Speedo is unstoppable. Now Modify trying to do something to Captain Shrimps, but this TF is still outputting just too much damage. Speedo hopping over the wall, trying to take down Eric Yang. The one sort of shining light sometimes right now, and he's trying to get damage on Speedo. Very, very low. Low energy as well. Might be able to pick up one kill as not quite. He just walks on away. Serpent's Fang in hand is going to be doing tons of damage to whoever he sees. And now this might just be the game. They've got supers in the base. They've got their Draven. This is not looking good. Practice did just respawn. Breezy going low, but it might just be too little. Speedo looking to reset as he does have the teleport. They want to try and continue this push. Eric Jian getting chunked out. And there's the Gale Force forward. Absolutely chatting out. Magi is still somehow alive. Practice picking up a kill on Breezy. That's great for him, getting the rocket jump reset. As now Modified might be trying to pick up a kill on the backside. This Draven is very, very low, but in comes the Twisted Fate as well. And now here comes the CC chain, stunned and locked and loaded as Speedo is dominating as C9 have been this entire game. Yeah, Wixie kind of kind of killed the Breezy there a little bit. Walked towards him as he had the fully charged Tristana bomb on him. Little, little unfortunate there, but does end up saving practice actually you did mention getting the rock jump reset off of the kill here and now they're just going to go back to the baron here they did a little baron bait they turned they got a bunch of kills and then they're able to burn down a little bit of the nexus towers got the top inhibitor as well so now there'll be six minion waves or six super minions that uh that they now have to deal with pretty much every wave and it's gonna be very hard for them to even try and pressure this ocean soul that has just spawned i mean C9 doesn't even really need Ocean Soul, quite honestly. They can just run straight down mid and 
win this game, I feel, with the Baron minions, with all the supers, with just how far ahead they are. I don't think I've ever seen a gold lead this big, 18 or 19,000 at 22 minutes. Yeah, they do need it for that 100% speed run here that they seem to be going for anyway, so we'll see if they do decide to pick it up or if they just decide to just end the game here, go into game two with such a huge momentum going out of game one. Absolutely. It can certainly be tough to try and play against a team who just demolished you like that as now Eric Ziyang is going to be the first one to go down in this final fight. As Burn My Dread did get the full pop, has the Hemo play going, is trying to heal up, but it won't be enough. Captain Shrimps rampaging through the opposition as the Destiny comes down, looking to try and pick off Magi one last Red time. Card. Everfrost lands, didn't quite get the gold card, hit the red card, so no stun there, but you don't really need it. The stun gets popped on the while they're in the fountain, but that doesn't really matter. Modified up on the side, don't really care about him, as this will be game one going over to C9 Amateur in dominating fashion in just 23 minutes. Yeah, dominating is honestly an understatement in this case. I mean, C9 Amateur definitely put up a very impressive display here. They absolutely eviscerated Dare Gaming in the early game, being able to start from that just simple invade, burning two flashes there out of Eric Zhang and Magi, and then being able to convert that to a first blood on the bot side, burn double sums out of the Tristana as well. And they were able to just transform that. Uh, bot lane lead into a lot of pressure elsewhere and it sounds kind of weird but that's partially responsible for why this jace that we're looking at right now is about one and eight <laughs> yes, yeah eight and that's because if your bot lane is winning and your bot lane is absolutely stomping you can pretty much ignore them especially if it's a draven nautilus lane and now gu and captain shrimps don't have to invest anything in the bot side they can now start putting resources into speedo because Wixie and Breezy are already absolutely stomping their lane. It's a very solid decision to do instead of trying to just hard snowball one lane. You say, okay, what if we have every lane winning instead of just one? And very so true. They're able to do that in such an impressive fashion, being able to recognize that pretty much on the fly because the initial game plan, it looked to me, was, hey, just invest resources bot lane and then we can win. But they didn't need to. They ended up getting a solo lead on their own, and then they immediately changed plans. They're like, okay, let's just make sure this Jace is never relevant. And that's exactly what they did, and they did that so flawlessly. Yeah, I mean, it was just about understanding how ahead they were on the bot side and realizing they could let that go, and they could go somewhere else and just continue to snowball their entire team. A really great job done by C9. Now, the question is, will Dare be able to answer back in game two, or will C9 take the 2-0? Find out right after the break.
Welcome back, everyone, to C9 versus Dare, as we really saw C9 just completely deconstruct Dare in game one, I think. Absolutely. It was it was a bit rough looking for Dare there. Now, going into game two, uh, it's important to just kind of shake that off, say, okay, we lost one. It's fine. Re Regather yourselves, essentially. Make sure you guys aren't just going off willy-nilly being like oh yeah no we got stomped game one it's now hopeless just keep your composure think about what you need to do what you need to adapt to 
and essentially prevent the C9 speedrun <laughs> is what they're trying to do. So Very true. Yeah, they're trying to just play their lanes incredibly aggressively and turn that into um, a, a game victory. And, you know, maybe Dare needs to pick some either more aggressive or maybe more defensive options for the early game so that they can try and slow down this game plan that has been coming out of uh, Cloud9. As last game was really just snowball after snowball. The second they get an advantage in one area, they let it push to its maximum, and then they transition it somewhere else. Yeah. They essentially just need to try and prevent that initial snowball in the map from starting in the first place, and that way it makes it much more difficult for C9 to get those plays rolling. It makes them much more likely to make a mistake trying to force those plays and then react, punish them appropriately, and then try and get something off of the punish here. We're going to be going into draft, though. Dare will ban Rumble first out again. Very strong pick. Ferris following up. Haven't seen any variation in the bans yet. Ezreal following. Already discussed most of these bans here. There yeah, and just doesn't look like any adaptation. I mean, Lulu Karma. denies Kogma as a pick. Uh, Varus is just very uh, solid. Getting rid of the Karma, I think that's good out of Dare because you probably don't want to be first picking it uh, as Lee Sin is up. So they opt for the Lee Sin pickup and they don't want to let C9 get that really aggressive support. So I think that's a good option on their end. And the Gwen ban away from C9 definitely don't want to be playing into that. Absolutely. So they did They did adapt. They did pick the Karma away. Went for the Lee Sin. And here's a counter pick that I love seeing. It's the set into Lee Sin. Absolutely terrible matchup for Lee Sin. Set wins it, I would say, 70-30. Yeah, we'll it, is, the 30%. it is not easy because Lee Sin operates on these really tight margins of damage where you just get enough. And Set loves to operate within those because you have the Haymaker, this giant shield, and you will survive, you know, Lee Sin's burst. As we are going to see a repeat on the Nautilus for Breezy, really putting on a masterclass with that champion. Yeah, such a powerful pick here. Tark, hover is something that's interesting. It is a more tanky option. It will be locked in, actually. So it'll be Tark Gangplank. So this Lee Sin looks like it will be not going into the top lane. Again, Set is still a very good flex pick. If this Lee Sin is going mid, I very would much would like to see C9 flex it to the mid lane. Make sure that you get that insanely oppressive matchup as Jarvan is going to be hovered here. Have not seen this champion in quite some time. It's definitely not been priority for some years yeah uh, actually we did see some j4 yesterday <clears throat> but uh if i'm not mistaken i think that i saw uh something from the players that this was a misinput and that it was uh supposed to be a silas instead of the jarvan um so clarification on that front we won't be seeing a jarvan for cloud nine i believe that is supposed to be a silas pickup Okay, that would that would make much more sense. There are plenty of impactful ultimates here. Lee Sin, Tarek, and Gangplank. Some of the best ultimates in the game bar Lee Sin, but Gangplank, Tarek definitely have those really impactful ultimates coming out. Kaisa, Tristana, Ophelios, and Caitlyn. We do Four not like ADCs. ADCs. <laughs> yeah, ADC pools really being pushed here as we've had six ADC bans uh, in this draft. As, you know, alongside Nautilus, there's still so many options that work really well. Um, what, in your mind, do you think synergizes with Nautilus of remaining supports? I mean, not supports. I this ADCs. earlier, but I think Callista definitely is one of the things that could pick up. Hey. And yeah, there Callista. it is. There's a Callista. I mean, it makes sense. You know, the counter engage with the ultimate. Oh you have uh, the ability for tons of damage with Nautilus engages. And now to round out Dare's draft is Akali and Jinx. Now, Jinx... Not the strongest early game. She gets picked uh, against the Nod. It might be tough, but this Akali certainly is going to be a bit of a spicy pickup. We've been seeing her band away at all levels of play, and I'm so excited to see how they take it. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a very strong pick here. Nidalee will be the last lock in here. That one is and... a bit questionable for me because there's not that much solid lockdown on the side of C9 that can guarantee the Nidalee Spear to land. A lot of the times where you see a Nidalee duo that has really strong presence in pro play is where you can lock down the enemy for quite some time. Gives enough time for a decently long-range spear to hit. In case you don't know, Nidalee spear, the damage does scale with the distance it travels. So landing a long-range spear rewards you much more than hitting a point-blank one. And so they don't have much of it that can go for it. Sure, Nautilus as a champion, that's one that you can count. 
set can kind of do it with his E, but it's a bit iffy because it's not something like an empowered Renekton stun that we often see so many times. It's still doable. It's still a very aggressive early game champion. I'm expecting this to make movements around the map in conjunction with the Silas here. Be able to make plays, especially with the Nautilus. Maybe we'll see a bunch of four-man top lanes punish the Lee Sin. Maybe we'll see four-man bot lanes. Who knows? I mean, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a Lee Sin jungle, as I don't see a Kali or right, Gangplank right. filling that role. So this does feel uh, like a bit of a blast from the past and seeing Nidalee versus Lee Sin um, going up against each other. And they might opt for, you know, those old school three camp clears into just heavy gank presence. And honestly, I'm really excited to see what X you can do on this champion because we've already seen him be very, very effective at rotating and using those early advantages, being aggressive. And Nidalee is the aggressive early game champion. So I think that if they can get rolling, it's going to be really tough. Now in the bot lane, we're not going to be seeing a repeat on that Draven. It's going to be a little bit more tempered with that Callista, but still plenty of pressure that can definitely be put out. Absolutely. Jinx does do decently well into Callista. It's not necessarily a good matchup for Jinx in any means, but placing down the Flame Choppers can absolutely stop Callista from getting in. Jinx does outrange Callista quite significantly in the rocket form, so it does have some points of mention to prevent this Callista from doing anything too severe to her. But the main problem is when the rest of the squad comes down. Uh, <laughs> Flame Choppers can only do so much. There's only three of them, and I don't see the Flame Choppers being able to stop that much damage coming through if they choose to dive. Park is kind of there for the dive, being able to pop the ulti early. It does take a lot of skill to use that, though, because if you pop it too early, then they can just disengage, and you're chilling. You have to wait. They have wait out the Tark ulti, and then they can redive, and you're just kind of trapped there. Yeah, it is certainly going to be tough to play out, but it is going to definitely be very, very interesting to watch. I think that this is a good adaptation out of Dare. They have some really great aggression, and they have so many options as we are getting right onto the Rift. As the, we'll see, will C9 be able to pull out the 2-0, or will Dare answer back and keep their RCL hopes alive? As we're already seeing a bit of a group up from this team staying on the bot side, maybe looking to get some cheese of their own. Yeah, it's definitely something that we want to look forward to to make sure that we can uh, get, get even a game three in here instead of just going for another 2-0. Uh, we'll be very interested to see how they adapt in the long run here. No real uh, variations on this uh, on the runes or summoner spells here. We do see Electrocute Nidalee instead of, I, I believe Conquer is actually the more favored rune in some cases, which means that he wants to go for bit more of a burst versus the option for the Nidalee here. And then it will actually be Burn My Dread on the Gangplank mid, rather than flexing the putting the Akali there. will be Akali into set. Now, it's quite interesting because Akali doesn't necessarily have the best of matchups into either of those champions. But I would definitely favor the Akali into Silas a bit more because it's more skill intensive and it definitely requires... Uh, less of just set running it down at her, as we're going to see yet another invade here. They did ward yes. for it, so they will pick it up. Another delayed repeat invade. They did have the ward down, and it was all off the back of Speedo heading up topside and recognizing that there's no one on that blue, meaning they have to be on this red. And whenever you've got a Nautilus and a Kaisa, uh, not a Kaisa, Callista, it is going to be so, so difficult to try and make it work. And the instant response, Air Jiang heading up topside, and this shouldn't be so dominant as we saw last time. There should be potential for some vertical, or at the very least, not just a complete um, thievery of the jungle, as a little bit of action already on the bot side with Breezy landing an early hook. Well, don't speak too soon, because we're going to see some early action here. Yeah, here comes the here comes the gank. The spear landed, but now XU actually going very, very low, as Burn My Dread was able to flash away just in time. That was very, very close, because I wasn't even expecting the spear to land, and when it does, you know how much extra damage uh, Nidalee can get. Absolutely, that flash is critical there. We'll see some of a little bit of a skirmish into that. Beautiful use of the Callista Spears to get the rend reset off of the minion as well as poking the Jinx down. Callista is one of those champions that is very mechanically intensive. It's a champion I personally love playing. One of my favorite champions in this game. And she has a lot of sort of minuscule things to do that you can definitely improve your damage output with. As we're going to see 
Yes, just speedo. Why? <laughs> this uh, this matchup is not the best for Akali here. Yeah, the second speedo got that early level three. Well, modified was getting some good harass down. It wasn't quite enough. It's not matter. Oh my level god! Two. An instant teleport. Bot speedo looking to try and make something happen. His practice is still only level one. Stun comes down onto Wixie, but it's not enough. His breezy's still barely alive. Actually, as Magic's trying to do what she can. Now, Magic picking up Breezy, Speedo looking for the re-engage. On the top, there's XU. Speedo could be going down. Teleport uh, popped by, not teleport popped by oh, Aaron Jang. This was just so chaotic, I could barely keep up, as I am not used to seeing level 3 teleport dives in the bot side. Yeah, we, <laughs> you said that it would be a bit more tempered down on the aggression now that Draven wasn't in there, but <laughs> looks like they just want to prove us wrong today. Speedo teleporting down level 3 to get the dive off, but he then misplayed the redive onto the Tark. It was free, you just needed to let the Callista tank it. But instead he chose to re-go re for it. I believe he greeted out to grab the kill as well. Because I don't remember him actually getting a, getting an assist onto the Jinx. Unless I'm recalling cor so, incorrectly. No. Um... So yeah, he did get the kill onto the Tark, so I guess you could say it's one for one. Tark did get two kills, but could have played it much cleaner, just let the Callista tank, she has mobility anyway, if she just auto Q, hop away E, you're good to go. Very, very true, as now both junglers around this bot side maybe trying to make something happen, as now practice and Magi not in too bad a position, while yes, those kills did go over uh, to Magi, having a little extra gold on your Taric is never uh, that bad, as you would like to snowball the Jinx, but she's still not too far behind. Yeah. I say I'm, re I'm rethinking it. It probably did that just so that the least sin coming down didn't get the kill. Now that I'm sort of reevaluating that scenario, because I found it a bit peculiar that they messed that one up, considering they've played it pretty cleanly the rest of the series. So that's my guess as to why he chose to take the tower, give the Tark the kill instead of Lee Sin, which I can definitely see as a valid reasoning behind that. Absolutely. Is now pathing up towards top XU is looking to try and punish Modified as he is so far pushed forward. Now Modified did spot it out. We'll use some of that. We'll just walk away, and that should be enough to stay alive. A lot of pressure top side. Silas did dip into Fog of War. They have no idea that he reset here, but Modified, Modified will take a lot of damage here. Yeah, Modified getting pulled in, trying to use that Shroud as well as possible. Getting Speedo very, very low, but actually dashing on forward and taking the kill on the Modified. Now, Eric Yang was looking to try and respond, but not able to do anything. Such an unfortunate. It looked like she barely didn't have enough energy to get the auto Q off. I believe she might have been like 10 or 5 or 15 energy off of getting that Q off. And that definitely would have resulted in the set kill and still would have died nonetheless, but would have gotten some gold in return. And it's really unfortunate that she didn't get the energy regen in time for that play. That is really, really tough. As now another potential mini dive bot side. Majai landing the stun. Breeze taking an extra tower shot, but Wixie's still so far ahead on XP over Dare's bot side as at least a full level up. Absolutely. It's very, very impressive down here. They did crash the third wave in for that dive, so Jinx ended up missing out on quite a bit of XP, so that dive was still insanely worth for this squad here. Callista can now exert her dominance. She has the Vamp Scepter, so any bit of poke that she takes, she can heal up right away just by autoing a few minions twice. She probably also has Taste of Blood in her runes. We unfortunately do not get to see the full rune page here, but I'd be willing to bet that she has Taste of Blood, Ravenous Hydra, as that's the most common uh, sort of domination page that you would go for when you're in ADC, so we'll see them get some poke out here. Hook does yeah, not a little miss, more hook but it's going to be another dive. Yeah, another dive as Captain Shrimps is here. Eggs Yang is looking to respond, but I don't know if that'll be enough. Now, the Terracult he picked up for the Silas. Nothing quite yet as the teleport is coming through for Burn My Dread. This is looking to turn around very, very quickly. Will we be able to get Captain Shrimps before the invulnerability comes down? The answer is no. Captain Shrimps and Breezy invulnerable for just a little bit. Now XU on top coming up with the rotate. Will they be able to pick up anything? And actually the snipe comes down on Magi as the re-engage comes through. Breezy is somehow still alive off that heel. Eric Jiang trying to clean it up, but oh, no. no. So, so close and this is disaster. The initial reset that was looking so good for Dare is falling apart in front of them. Yeah, it definitely looked like an over... Uh, an overextension from Captain Shrimps there. Picked up the Tark ulti. I thought she used it a little bit too late, but he ended up getting the empowered heal off of his W. I think he was just within the range where that counted as below, I believe, 30% health is the threshold. And was able to actually sustain through it till the Tark ulti dropped. He waited down. The Nidalee Spear connecting onto Magi. There were so many people around around the Tarek that you can't really walk, you're getting minion blocked by everyone. You have to keep going, and that was almost guaranteed despite him having complete movement of his character. Yeah, that 
is really tough, you know, with that just sort of threading the needle between all the characters and just that tracking uh, being so well spaced. Now, this game is nowhere near as dominant as the last one. You know, there's still plenty of uh, room to work, but Cloud9 still off to a very good start for themselves. Absolutely. Breezy already up here trying to pressure down this Rift Herald. Unfortunately, Izu is not on the top side, will not have that much pressure on there if Dare is keeping their jungle tracking correct. Of course, it is a little bit hard considering the Nidalee did go for a very unorthodox path, starting on your red buff and then immediately ganking mid-level 2, so it does provide a little bit of a challenge when tracking there, but we'll see Magi walk into Breezy. Yeah, Magi walking into Breezy isn't looking good. Stun actually misses. Chompers land and the flash over the wall is enough to keep Magi alive, but still having to bring your flash just for trying to get back to lane is so, so brutal. We will see if Silas get a bit yes. of a trade in here. A bit of a trade as Burn My Dread going quite low as this Silas is just really dancing around the Lost Chapter in hand doing so much for him. Absolutely, we will see just an absolute dominance here on this bot side. They know that Z that, Yiju, that Yiju, excuse me, I can't speak is on this bot side, so they have to respect the dive, they have to completely back off, which means that they get zoned off the majority of the wave that was crashed. I believe that was about one and a half waves, and they only got three ranged minions out of that. That is so tough for this Jinx, who's not even level six yet, nine minutes in, and just trying to find as much CS as possible. I mean, 43 this late in the game is so, so tough. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Bit of action, actually, top side. The engage coming from Speedo, pulling in modified, but beautiful flash out meaning that they should be safe. And XU just coming up, showing their face, but that won't be enough as Modify actually jumping back in, maybe looking for this re-engage as maybe a mistimed E. And oh, the E just going wide as that almost would have been a kill onto the set, which would have been massive. That would have been a kill, but that was very mechanically misplayed by Modified there. Cued the opposite direction and then stood into the set W, trying to get the final execute off. and. Definitely cost him the kill there. The E going wide is a bit expected. There's a lot of minions there. Have to kind of try to thread that, but it's super hard to hit at that point. But definitely could have played that a lot better. Could, it's probably going to be a kill there. Maybe she was just worried about the Nidalee coming back up to regank her because we, she knew that Nidalee just ganked. She's still topside. She can't magically teleport to bot lane. So could be why she wanted to rush it, but in the end, she just missed out on the kill. Very true, just missed out. Now oh, after no. seeing the Lee Sin back away, Ooh. the in comes the insta die, but I don't know if you win this, this Tarek is doing so much work, and actually Wixie just getting the rend, but still going down that Gangplank ulti, coming in clutch, keeping them under, but the escape from Breezy, a one for one, ADC is getting traded. Yeah, clutch exhaust there from uh, Magi, making sure that the Kalista doesn't get to do that much damage when she's auto attacking, it's definitely one of the more powerful summoner spells that you can take as a defensive tool, or even as an offensive tool if you engage and then drop the exhaust, but definitely saved practice for a lot longer than I think C9 and Cat Amateur were expecting. Uh, certainly a lot longer than I was expecting, as it felt like practice was just sort of able to just sit there for so, so long. The Rend still doing plenty of damage as well. It might delay uh, how much damage you do with each of your autos. If you wait out that exhaust, the Rend is still going to be huge. Yeah, for sure. We'll see this top wave crash in modified. Oh, She's no, actually Jing. <clears throat> He's getting caught out, trying to ward off away, but was just CC chain. You saw the one frame where he was able to pull out the ward, but wasn't able to have a second to jump to it. Yeah, definitely uh, pretty hard to get anything out when you're against the Nautilus Silas. Very hard to try and escape when they're able to lock you down while also dealing quite a bit of damage here. Modified will get engaged on here. It does have the yeah, ultimate pop. Might be trying to do and something. Go in, does actually. still have the ultimate. Go tries to go in, gets hit with the ultimate, and Speedo just slaying Modified as really understanding this matchup. Yeah, that was a beautiful cancel on the E2 from, a, from Modified there. And again, the bot lane of Dare is getting completely zoned off of this wave. This, they have missed so many waves just through, through the sheer jungle pressure that Iju is exerting from just being in the bot, bot jungle. Yeah, it is so tough for this Dare bot side to try and really do anything as they're really getting completely zoned out. As you said, this is just a masterclass, really, of wave management by Cloud9 Amateur. Yeah, especially from Iju and their bot lane being able to recognize when we're stacking the waves, when they're crashing, and when you need to be bot sidestep, they have to back up and respect the the pressure that we're exerting there. 
it's something it's really nice to see us. Because a little worried for Burn My Dread there. We will see Modified clearing out a ward here. Dragon started up from Izu. Should just be going over to them. No contest. Leeson is in the bot quadrant, but Breezy is definitely zoning him quite hard. Yeah, as now Eric Jang just trying to pick up his red buff. And now actually Izu is going to hop over the wall. Here comes the ultimate. Now the collapse coming in from Magi in practice, meaning that their jungler should stay alive as Wixie is over the wall. It does use the Q to hop over. There's now a 3v3. Not looking too great for Dare as the Taric just gets CC locked. And now here comes the Silas looking to clean up onto the Lee Sin. The jump comes over, but will it be enough? Uh, the flash over Blast Plant. Really, really nice job to stay alive by Eric Zhang, but again, still so much control over this bot side from Cloud9. Absolutely. The bot lane has been in absolute control this entire game. It's really beautiful to watch Wixie and Breezy putting on quite the performance here as Speedo definitely making some plays of his own. Just in the just in the solo lane on his own little island as top laners normally love to do. But yeah, it's it's been an absolute domination of this bot lane. Yeah, and again, it's not just kills, it's not just these skirmishes, but it's also getting the most out of every single one. All of these fights haven't been without reason. They're not just getting kills for kills, they're getting kills to deny waves. They're doing it at certain points that they've optimized to deny as much gold as possible, and it's really, really uh, fascinating to watch. Absolutely. A lot of people are like, okay, yeah, don't fight until there's an objective, but minion waves crashing is a form of an objective. It's a lot of gold that could be pumped in. It's a lot of XP. And being able to deny that from the enemy team is definitely worth trying to dive and trying to get kills on them. So, especially in this early game, it becomes a little less important later on as there are more important objectives up, like Dragon Soul, like Baron, even Elder if we get late enough. But it's always something that you need to consider. Those are sort of early game objectives that I feel like a lot of teams don't try to abuse and try to force teams to give up. Yeah, in a way, it sort of reminds me of the uh, active, you know, CS deny mechanic that's within uh, Dota, where you can uh, CS your own minions to deny them from the opponent, and this is sort of a form of doing that, crashing them into towers really, really well. Yeah, a bit of a bit of an old school game. We can't really speak on uh, League of Legends, though. However, <laughs> not too much. Is now the die potentially coming in, but I don't think they were ready for this one. As Wixie just gets pulled right back into Dare's waiting arms and burn my dread, slaying down Wixie off of a beautiful insect by Eric Jang. Yeah, really solid to get that angle. Actually, really one of the most mechanical, uh, mechanically intensive things that I've seen this game so far. It's all just been a lot of macro, and I mean C9 has been winning it so far. Yeah, but right there, at the very least, that slows down some of this tempo. It forces the reset on the ADC. It denies a little bit of pressure mid. Now, this uh, tier 1 should still be going down relatively soon, as it is very, very low. But at the very least, you're trying to answer back where you can. As the fight isn't here. over yet, Captain Shrimps jumping on Eric Yang. Not quite in one-shot territory, only having that Everfrost in hand, but still doing a really good chunk of damage on this Lee Sin. Absolutely. This Silas is decently fed, does have the Everfrost at 16 minutes. It's nothing nothing too insane, but it's still nothing to scoff at either compared to the very little items here. Yeah, as now Modified getting caught between so many members of Cloud9 as the duel was looking okay against the set, but it was really just a bait for the Nidalee and the Nautilus to come up the side as it is really, really tough out here because C9 just moves together so well. Yeah, taking a skirmish versus a C9 amateur essentially means that you're going into a 1v3 from the looks of it. They've been able to make a lot of these 1v1s here turn into just complete washes due to numbers advantage. And yeah, of course, this has been an exception though. Yeah, I am going to say Burn My Dread and Captain Shrimp's going back and forth. Uh, Burn My Dread's still pretty strong. I did love that little interaction with the preset barrel um, that I don't think Captain Shrimp's was ready for. Really, really uh, well done. Good awareness by Burn My Dread of how to set up uh, these spaces when you are playing uh, Gangplank. And I think if Dare is going to win this game, it's going to be through that Gangplank. It's going to be through some really insane barrel setups that just catch uh, C9 off guard, whether it's one-shotting or really chunking out the uh, Callista or the, not the Nidalee, then using that to sort of push this Jinx to get excited. Absolutely. Being able to actually chunk out a lot of a lot of these members on the side of C9 Amateur with barrels, with the Gangplank ulti, is something that definitely needs to be abused by Dare at this point in the game. 2-0 has the Triforce, is pretty much the strongest member on their team. 
So they definitely should use this, use that gangplank to accelerate what they can and try and contest what they can. Exactly. Like right here in their jungle, maybe just trying to find some spacing off of the gangplank. Now Xian getting pushed out as well. Gonna have to jump away. Actually uses the kick very well, but gets caught in the middle of the safeguard as the ward hop doesn't get completed and Speedo gets another kill into his KDA. Yeah, a bit bizarre of the positioning. They knew that C9 Amateur was in the bot side of their jungle, and yet he was still trying to clear out his cogs, trying to get what gold he could, but honestly, respect should have just been paid to them as we will see the all in here. Yeah, a little bit of greed as Captain Trips is looking to go for the duel, but now here, Burn My Dread on the teleport, but it might just be to try and deny any more engage as there wasn't a re-engage from Modified. Yeah, very hard to get that re-engage down there once Captain Shrimp stole the Akali ult, used the R1. Silas already has so much mobility, adding an Akali ultimate on top of it is a bit overkill, some would argue. Me being one of those. But <laughs> <laughs> definitely going to be pretty hard to deal with this Rift Herald that is now dropped Certainly. in the mid lane. Yeah, and even though they were able to pop the eye, it still gets the charge off, and there's one more turret. Breezy jumping on in. Might be a little bit of an overextend. The CC chain does come down, but the Callista ulti is always there. Now the re-engage comes through. Terrak ulti gets popped. Could be good, as modified. Actually, all four members picking up that Terrak buff. Breezy still not going down. Magiant Brax in the back line, getting dove by Speedo and Captain Shrimps. Not looking good for them. Modified and Eric Jang trying to come back in and support Ooh. their teammates. But a massive haymaker to absolutely obliterate Dare's bot side as the... Fight gets turned. The second the Terra Gold, he was gone. C9 said, it's my time to shine. And with no objectives left on the map, they're going to do what they can to get as much mid-priority as possible. That fight started to look pretty bad for C9 Amateur. Wixie had to burn the Fates Call in order to get Breezy out of the Flame Chompers, make sure that he didn't take too much damage. On the re-engage, the Terra Gold was beautifully spaced, beautifully timed, and C9 Amateur was stuck on trying to just kite this back, make sure that they don't lose too much. They ended up killing Breezy, or Breezy ended up going down in the end. But then a beautiful steal from Captain Shrimps onto Lee Sin ultimate kicked. I believe it was the Lee Sin into another member on Dare. Got a two-man haymaker from the true damage. Hurt super badly. One of the most, one of the strongest basic abilities in the game in terms of damage. And just absolutely turned that fight around. Yeah, as... It's really looking good for C9. They understood how to disengage and when to re-engage, really optimizing uh, their spacing around that Terracolty, making sure that they didn't just fight within it. And now Modified getting uh, harassed by Captain Shrimps. That's really been the story of these side lanes. Now Burn My Dread, the next one on C9's target list as he's in the crosshairs of that Nautilus ultimate. And there's the airborne. Actually, the teleport's coming through. They want to try and do something here. But again, this will be another 5v5. And when you're 10k down, that's not exactly recommended as it might just be transition to a defense of this inhibitor tower. Yeah, the oranges actually did come out. A lot of people don't know that oranges actually can cleanse knockups. You just have to flash afterwards in order to be able to move. And it's the same thing with QSS. So Burn My Dread definitely using that mechanic to the fullest there. Got out of the Nautilus ultimate with relative ease. Of course, did have the burn the flash, but certainly saved his life. And will eventually lead to maybe a contest of this Baron. I don't see it happening, but they're going to go for yeah, it anyway. I don't think that you can. The Terrak ulti is going to be up in just a couple seconds. They know it's going down. It's getting burned down so, so quickly. And now the re-engage comes down. The Terrak ulti gets popped, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Speedo's already unstoppable onto the Jinx. And that's not how you want to be going down. Is now the invulnerability is out. The stuns come down, but Wixie's on a killing spree. Make it two as he's getting that two for one special. Bogo and Xu and the rest of his squad are looking to march down this mid lane. Absolutely. They will be able to get this mid inhibitor. I don't think they'll be able to end. They may go for it anyway. They do not have any ultimates on the side of Dare. So contesting the Nexus might be a bit of a challenge for them. And it might not even be a consideration. Never mind. Jinx is spawning in two seconds. I cannot see the numbers for some reason. Uh, but will not be able to actually end. Respawn timers are a bit too short there. But they will end up getting another inhibitor on this bot side. Top tower will also go down. And it looks like they'll just try to get triple inhibitor once again. Yeah, and they're just trying to make sure that they are putting as much pressure on to Dare as possible, where they want to end this game quickly. And they are doing such a great job. They're moving to their team. They know how they're stronger, and they know why they're stronger. They know who to play through and what targets to lock down. Absolutely. And a little subtle note there from Speedo. Instead of just staying top and try to shove that wave in, 
he actually moved to mid lane to shove the wave in because that way he's closer to his team, he can respond if Dare tries to actually engage on it while it's 4v5, and it's a shorter distance. So, really good recognition from there. He w he knew that he wasn't able to actually burst, burn down that tower. He knew he wasn't going to be able to get anything top lane, so he just said, all right, I'll push out mid and be close to my team. Okay, it looks like we lost our uh, lost my play-by-play -play here for a little bit. Oh, but... I realized my microphone was accidentally off as I was going crazy throughout that entire fight. My apologies, as that was the game-ending fight. It was going absolutely crazy, and now the teleport's coming in to secure the Nexus Towers, as once again, in sub-25 minutes, Cloud9 Amateur are going to be taking this game as real dominant fashion, confirming that... Dare will not be able to make playoffs for this Risen Champions League, and Cloud9 will, should be moving forward with a 2-0 opening in this group. Yeah, very strong performance from C9 Amateur here, showing that they are definitely one of the stronger teams at this tournament in the current state that they are in. Of course, doesn't reflect on what they will be performing at as they move into the playoffs, as I believe with this win here, they are confirmed to move into that position. So. Will be interesting to see how far they go, but as for Dare, uh, yeah, that's really unfortunate. They're getting eliminated right now, but honestly, C9 Amateur just played super well. They've been playing with each other for, I'm pretty sure, since the beginning of the spring split. And so, definitely have a lot more practice, are just working much better as a team overall. There's really not much to say. I don't think that any of these players are mechanically better. They just had better macro, better team coordination, and better synergy overall. 100%. Their synergy was really, really great as this team has been playing and practicing together since Spring Proving Grounds. And it really shows just how uh, well they can play together, how well they understand the map, and how well they understand each other's play styles. It's really, really fun to watch now. Uh, this will be uh, the last match, not the last match for Dare's season, as they do have one more uh, game in this tournament up against Glaive Prime, I believe. They'll be playing for third place in the group. Got to get those points so they can make sure you qualify for those tier for tier one uh, at the end of this Proving Ground circuit. But again, Cloud9 punching their ticket into the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. We'll look forward to seeing how well they perform later on, how well they do tomorrow i believe is their next game unless i'm mistaking the schedule monday, monday is monday. the last Never mind. day it goes around for the week and then that will reset the bracket as they will take on zoom